Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Yasmin Ibrahim. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a letter from Russian President Vladimir Putin dealing with solid relations of friendship binding Bahrain and Russia. President Putin noted the deep rooted friendship between the two countries, looking forward to further strengthening joint cooperation across all fields in a manner that serves common interests. In the letter, the Russian leader wished His Majesty the King abundant health and happiness, and Bahrain and its people for their development and progress under his leadership. His Royal Highness, the Deputy King, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met with the Kyrgyz Minister of Foreign Affairs, Zinbek Kulubayev Moldo Kanovich, at Gudaybiyah Palace. His Royal Highness, the Deputy King, highlighted the Kingdom's commitment to further strengthening Bahrain Kyrgyzstan relations and trade cooperation, which continued to receive the committed support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the President of Kyrgyzstan, Sadir Japarov. His Royal Highness was then presented with a handwritten letter addressed to His Majesty the King from the President of Kyrgyzstan. Moldo Kovic converted the President's greetings to His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Deputy King, and in return, His Royal Highness conveyed His Majesty the King's greetings to the President of Kyrgyzstan. For his part, the Kyrgyz Minister of Foreign Affairs expressed gratitude for the opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness the Deputy King and for His Royal Highness's continued support on furthering cooperation and relations between the two countries. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Hamad bin Faisal Al Malki, also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness, the Deputy King, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met with the Chief Executive Officer of ENI, Claudio Descalzi, at Qutaybiya Palace. His Royal Highness affirmed that the Kingdom's oil and gas sector is a key contributing sector to the Kingdom's comprehensive development, led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness emphasized the importance of building on the progress achieved within the Kingdom's oil and gas sector by strengthening public-private partnerships and deploying initiatives that reposition the economy as a smart oil economy to achieve quality opportunities and long-term sustainable growth. He commended the efforts of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and chairman of the oil and gas holding company Noga Holding, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, in supporting the sector's growth and its contribution to the kingdom's development. Latest developments in the oil and gas sector at the regional and international levels were also discussed. His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad, the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Oil and Environment, Dr. Mohammed bin Mubarak bin Dayna, also attended the meeting. The Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Infrastructure and Chairman of the Board of Directors of Mumtalikat Holding Company, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, said that Mumtalikat witnessed a remarkable recovery during the year 2021. Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah stated that this recovery led to the enhancement of the financial results of the Mumtalikat Group and contributed to the acceleration of the economic growth witnessed in Bahrain. Bahrain Mumtalikat Holding Company announced its consolidated financial results for 2021, during which it recorded the highest net profits since its inception. Mumtalikat's unconsolidated financial statements saw profits of 45.6 million Bahraini dinars and 20 million Bahraini dinars were paid to the shareholder for the purpose of contributing to the state's general budget. For his part, the CEO of Mumtalikat, Khalid al rumehi affirmed that the implementation of Mumtalikat's new investment strategy was making this unprecedented achievement in the company's history. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, praised the fruitful results of the participation of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in the tripartite Arab summit in Sharm el Sheikh, which was conveyed with the Jordanian monarch and president of Egypt, stressing that it affirmed the unity of visions regarding the consolidation of Arab national security and the promotion of regional and global peace. The Foreign Affairs Minister stated that the Arab tripartite summit is a model for joint Arab action, a true embodiment of the spirit of brotherhood and the close and growing strategic partnership between the brotherly countries based on solid foundations of friendship and mutual respect. He hailed the welcome of the leaders of the three countries to the upcoming summit between the leaders of the GCC countries, 
Jordan, Egypt, and the Prime Minister of Iraq with the U.S. President, which would be at the invitation of the custodian of the two holy mosques king, which affirms their keenness to coordinate Arab positions and deepen partnership with allied and friendly countries. Dr. al Zayani expressed pride in the wise diplomatic approach of His Majesty the King with the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, which has promoted the kingdom's leading role on the regional and international arenas as an active partner in protecting Arab national security. The Minister of Information Affairs and President of the Gulf Radio and Television Festival, Dr. Ramzan bin Abdullah Al-Naimi, in the presence of the Director General of the Gulf Radio and Television Authority and Secretary General of the Festival, Majri bin Mubarak al qahtani opened the media market, which is held on the sidelines of the 15th Gulf Radio and Television Festival, held under the slogan, Our Media is Our Identity. The minister, accompanied by senior officials in radio and television organizations in the GCC, toured the media market, where they were briefed on the participating pavilions. He stressed the importance of continuing media and technical communication in all its forms between GCC countries to protect the national identity of the GCC, noting that the media market is a distinguished opportunity to see the different experiences of the participants in the fields of television and radio production, which contributes to strengthening ties, increasing cooperation fields, and exchanging experiences among participants, which will positively reflect on the development of Gulf artistic and media work. A press conference was held to announce the final details of the activities of the 15th session of the Gulf Radio and Television Festival in the presence of a number of journalists and correspondents of the Gulf Arab and International News Agencies. At the beginning of the conference, the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Information, Dr. Abdurrahman Bahar, conveyed the greetings of the Minister of Information, Dr. Ramzan bin Abdullah Naimi, and his best wishes of success to the participants. He praised the tireless efforts made by those in charge of the radio and television in preparing and organizing the festival and their keenness to hold it as soon as possible after the corona pandemic. He stressed that gather gathering this elite of media professionals was a necessity for the exchange of opinions and ideas regarding the media and its issues and its development in a manner that meets the aspirations of leaders of the GCC countries. The Secretary General of the festival, Majri bin Mubarak al qahtani explained keenness to make this event the largest gathering of art and media pointing to the historical media and artistic values of the festival. He said that the festival this year witnesses the participation of more than 300 participants from outside Bahrain, from media professionals, artists, official and private production companies, in addition to participants from the Kingdom of Bahrain. A ceremony was held at the Labour Market Regulatory Authority, LMRA, Mina Salman Center, the winner of the gold classification under the Taqim classification. The event was attended by LMRA Chief Executive Officer Jamal Abdul Aziz Al Alawi and Information and Electronic Government Authority, IGA Chief, Head of Taqim Committee, Mohammed Al Qaid. Al Alawi hailed the directives of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to government bodies to enhance services and achieve the highest quality standards. He affirmed the LMRA RA's commitment to enhance the effectiveness of these services provided and to facilitate procedures for the public in line with the strategic priorities in the government program. He underlined the authority's keenness to provide innovative initiatives that contribute to achieving customer satisfaction across all services, in addition to developing work team skills and capabilities to perform the tasks and work duties assigned to them. To ensure service excellence, addressing the ceremony, Al Qaid expressed his sincere wishes of success to the Mina Salman Center and its staff and to continue the development process to maintain this honorable classification. He stressed the importance and impact of the self-evaluation process and the continuous adoption of the com committee's observations and standards and the provision of the government services in an innovative manner to achieve advanced classifications. The Ministry of Finance and National Economy published the Quarterly Economic Report of Bahrain for the first quarter of 2022, which summarizes the most prominent developments at the local economic level and the performance of a number of economic indicators, in addition to a summary review of infrastructure projects and competitiveness reports for Bahrain. According to the preliminary data issued by the Information and E-Government Authority, the gross domestic product witnessed a remarkable growth during the first quarter of this year, and the positive data 
therefore the economy of Bahrain came to reflect the national efforts, plans and initiatives aimed at promoting the endeavors of financial sustainability, economic stability and investment in strategic projects to achieve the objectives of the economic recovery plan. As part of the activities of the National Programme for Parliamentary and Municipal Elections 2022 in its second edition, the first activities of the Candidate Qualification Programme were launched, organized by the Bahrain Institute for Political Development, where it organized a workshop titled The Legal System of the Electoral Process in Bahrain. The workshop discussed the theoretical and legal framework of the electoral process and the legal provisions and procedures for organizing the process. During the workshop, the participants learned about the relationship between democracy and elections, the most important historical stages through which Bahrain has gone, and the political stations it witnessed. Today we have session for the candidates from both uh, municipality council and representative council for the next election coming in Bahrain. And uh, we have had uh, a lot of important subject for the candidate to discuss. Uh, and also most of the participants uh, they have a traditional idea about the election in Bahrain, but uh, we would like to focus, focus them on the law and what is the rule of, uh, of law in Bahrain for the next election in Bahrain. The Nationality Passports and Residence Affairs, NPRA, announced the launch of a service of renewing the passports of citizens living abroad. The Under Secretary for NPRA, Sheikh Hisham bin Abdurrahman Al Khalifa, said that the service would be processed within 10 working days, while it's used to take over two months. And to speak more about this service, we are joined over the phone by officer in the NPRA, Lieutenant Rashid Salah Al Dosri. Hello, Lieutenant Al Dosri. Can you tell us more about the updates on the passport renewal service and how it further boosts? the quality of facilitates Bahrain provides to its citizens. Hello, good evening. First of all, I would like to thank you for having me on behalf of immigration to talk about the new service, which has been launched recent under the guidance of Sheikh Hisham bin Abdurrahman Al Khalifa, the Ministry of Interior and the Secretary for Nationality, Passport and Residence Affairs. This service has been launched in collaboration with DHL and to enable citizens and especially both living outside of Bahrain to apply for replacement of passport in any part of the world through the MPRI website. What is special about the new service is the time it takes for the application process. Usually this type of applications take around two months to complete. However, with this revised process, people can get their passports renewed in 10 working days while they are abroad. That's it. And I hope we improve further our services to the people of Bahrain and the citizens and all people who are living in this country. Thank you. And that was officer in the NPRA, Lieutenant Rashid Saleh al Dosri. Thank you for joining us. As part of its awareness strategies, the General Traffic Department implements awareness campaigns, especially in the summer, to spread traffic awareness about the importance of adhering to regulations and rules by raising safety rules in the use of bicycles. The department seeks to intensify its presence in areas where the use of bicycles increases in all governorates of the kingdom, protecting and informing riders about the most important road safety guidelines. It also sheds light on the most important incorrect traffic behaviors committed by some some road users, including drivers, cyclists and pedestrians, which expose them and others to the risk of dangerous traffic accidents. During these campaigns, special electronic jackets were distributed and their importance was emphasized in deciding the direction of cyclists' movement on the road, especially during the evening time. Bicycle users were also introduced to the most important aspects of safety in various languages to ensure that information reaches the largest possible segment and achieves the desired goals. Thank you.